Hello, I'm Michael Hackney, and the tutorial that you're about to watch is going to show you how to calibrate your extruder using a, a simple device that I designed that holds a digital caliper. Uh, we'll get into all of that in just a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to say right up front, you know, I apologize for the low video and audio technical quality here. I'm doing this in my, in my home. Actually, this is my work office and uh, partly in my living room and so you know when i get to the part where i'm actually showing you how to use the um, the device to calibrate the extruder you're going to hear the fan in the background from my um from my titan arrow extruder i i at this point don't know how to filter out that level of noise perhaps if i wore a microphone uh, headset so the audio was coming from right here um, and didn't pick up background noise that would work i'm going to experiment with some of these other um, you know technologies to see how they affect but I really I don't want to slow down getting this content out because the content's important and this particular video is important because you really need to calibrate your extruder before we get into the other kiss slicer um, calibration wizard uh, features I've already done the temperature calibration wizard but the next one is is flow rate and flow rate requires having a calibrated extruder so I uh, have spent some time um, the last week or so coming up with this technique for calibrating your extruder. And now I'm going to show you how to do it. And then as soon as this is done, then we'll jump back into the, uh, the Kiss Slicer tutorials on how to use the uh, Kiss Slicer calibration wizards. So apologize in, in advance for the um, sort of the low technical quality, but I do hope that the content you find, uh, 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 you know, high quality. So here we go. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Michael Hackney, and today I'm going to show you how to calibrate your extruder using this new extruder calibration tool um, that I just designed, and we'll make the files available so you can print uh, the parts to, uh, to make your own to calibrate your extruder accurately. Basically, the tool uses a standard caliper, a uh, digital caliper, and I actually found this one on Amazon for like $8.95 shipped with Amazon Prime here in the U.S., it's actually made out of injection molded carbon re fiber reinforced plastic, so it's nice and light, which is what I like about it. It's not unwieldy to use. Um, it is. It does only measure to a tenth of a millimeter, but for this purpose, that's perfectly fine. Uh, is if you think about how uh, folks have been calibrating extruders in the past, you basically will uh, put a mark on your filament with a magic marker, uh, measure up 100 millimeters, put another mark on it, then ex measure that with a, um, a caliper or, a, um, or even a ruler, and then extrude 100 millimeters and then measure where the second mark is and uh, you know, then es calculate what the, uh, what the delta is. And uh, it's not a very precise technique. It can be off by four, five, maybe even more millimeters. Um, whereas this tool will, will give you a little bit better, or actually a lot better repeatability. So I'm going to show you how to use it in just a minute. First I'll show you a little bit about it. So the caliper itself fits into a, a slot designed for it and is held in place with an M3 set screw. The depth gauge of the caliper uh, fits into a slot on the filament clamping mechanism here. And again, it's attached with an M3 set screw which you can uh, loosen and tighten through this access hole on the side. The filament is going to come up through the bottom and through this groove and clamp down with this uh, thumb screw, or you could use a regular um, cap head socket screw, um, to clamp the filament securely to this. And so basically what will happen is it'll start in a position like this, and as the extruder is uh, instructed to extrude 100 millimeters, it's going to go down, 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 down until it's extruded 100 millimeters, or what it thinks is 100 millimeters, and you're going to read off the value, and voila, there you have it. So let's see how this whole thing works. First thing you want to do is heat up your hot end. So I've got mine set to 195 degrees C because I'm going to be calibrating with uh, PLA. I'm going to then jog down until I'm about 50 millimeters off the bed. Now this tool and technique work with a Delta printer, but it also works perfectly fine with, uh, with a Cartesian printer. Um, 
even a core XY, as long as you have some room above uh, to position the tool and a surface that you can position the tool against on the top, you can use it to, uh, to calibrate. And of all of my printers, I have a Lulzbot Taz, I have a Prusa i3 Mark IIs, um, I have a couple of homegrown um, Cartesians and a bunch of Deltas, and I've been able to calibrate all of them using this tool. So I'm positioned down, and the reason I like to do it 50 to 75 millimeters above the bed is, as you'll see, uh, once we start extruding, the, the material will actually form a nice little coil at the bottom. In fact, here's one from a previous uh, test that I did. And um, it's nice and compact, and you just pull it off and throw it away, and you're good to go. If you're much higher than that, you create spaghetti that goes everywhere. Uh, but that 50 to 75 millimeter seems to be a magic, uh, a magic value, at least for, for this setup. Um, make a nice compact uh, coil. Next thing you want to do, you'll notice that the filament is a little bit curved. That's because it's been wrapped tightly on a spool and it has some kinks in it. I like to grasp the filament close to the extruder and then use my forefinger and thumb in my other hand and very tightly stroke about 200 millimeters. Um, and what you'll feel is the heat uh, from the friction. And I can actually feel my fingertips getting warm. Uh, will straighten out those kinks and um, also that larger curvature from being on the uh, being on the spool. In fact, you can see it there. It's much straighter than it was before. So the next thing we're going to do is attach the device. So I'm going to remove my thumb screw and I'm going to place the filament into the slot in the filament clamp. And there's actually a, a hole. Um, in the filament clamp that matches your filament. So in this case 1.75 millimeters and there, I have another uh, clamp that you can print for 2.85 millimeter filament. You want it nicely aligned in that, that hole. And then I'm going to install the thumb screw and um, I'm not going to tighten it down. I just want to get it in there because I need to be able to slide, slide it up and down. Now I'm going to position the calibration tool, so it's sitting on the top of the extruder. In this case, it's an E3D um, online um, Titan Arrow extruder, and it happens to have a nice flat surface, but uh, usually uh, the, the only printer that I had that was a little bit tricky was my Prusa, um, but even that wasn't too difficult to find a, a, you know, a nice position uh, where I could kind of hold uh, the tool on the top. So I've got it held in place on the top, I'm then going to slide, gently slide the clamp up until it's about 10 millimeters from the top of the tool. Don't push it all the way. And then I'm going to secure the thumb screw so the filament is actually clamped nice and tight in there so it doesn't slip. Next, I'm just going to push the bottom of the, um, the filament clamp up just to kind of straighten out any kinks and things like that and put a little tension on the filament. I'm going to go up and zero my caliper and I'm good now to actually do the calibration. The calibration itself, I've written a G-code, which you can either print um, as if it were a, uh, uh, you know, an object that you were going to print, or if you're on a, um, a Duet platform with RepRap firmware, uh, which supports macros, I have it set up as a macro so I can, uh, can run it. The macro is going to start out slow, it's going to extrude 100 millimeters and then slow down uh, before it gets to the end. So it starts out slow, speeds up, and then slows down. Uh, it will beep at the beginning, and that gives you a 10 second warning so you can get the, um, the tool set up uh, and, and held securely. You can do a final tensioning and you can do a final zeroing, then it'll beep and start to extrude. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll hear the beep very lightly in the background. There was the beep. I'm just going to do a final tension, a final zeroing. I'm holding the, um, the tool now, waiting. There was a beep and it just started extruding and it's starting slow. Half a millimeter a second is uh, the starting speed. And then after 10 millimeters, it's gonna speed up to one millimeter a second. And then it's gonna speed up to two. And then it's gonna speed up to three. Stay at three for a little while. And then it starts to slow down and ramps to one and then back down to a half a millimeter. So we're 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, so now we're speeding up even more. This is a prototype version. 
The new version has nice little finger guides up at the top. It makes it a little bit more convenient to hold at the top. Notice the coil is forming down there nicely. So we're at uh, 80, 89, 90, so we're starting to slow down now. And five, seven, and eight. So now I'm being careful to make sure that I hold it steady and uh, nice and securely pressed against the top of the extruder. And it just finished. And I can read there on the display 103.4 millimeters. So now we can go to the computer and I'll show you how to do the calculation to adjust your yeast steps. So we can run the test and it should come out to exactly 100. Stay tuned. Down just a second. I wanted to show something to people. Um, I'm going to go up here and open up a new browser tab, and I'm going to go to this URL right here, reprap.org. I'm sorry, reprap.org slash wiki slash g dash code. This is uh, sort of the official repository, if you will, for all of the G codes for um, reprap type of printers. So if I want to find M92, I can go to this page and I can search for M92, and here it is. Set axis steps per millimeter. Here's what firmware supports it. So Sprinter, Marlin, Repetier, Smoothie, RepRap, Firmware, Redeem, and Mark IV Duo all support it. Here are the parameters that it takes. Uh, here are some examples and then any extra programming notes. If you ever have a question about G code that you might see in the G code that your slicer puts out, or you're just curious about how things work, you can go to uh, this um, page and learn everything you want to know about the G code. And it's kept up to date by the various firmware authors. And I know uh, David Crocker is extremely diligent about keeping things up to date here with new releases of the RepRap firmware. So that was a little sidetrack. So here we go. We have currently set um, the E steps are at 837 steps per millimeter. We measured um, that when I instructed the extruder to extrude 100 millimeters, it actually extruded 103.4 millimeters. Now I ran the calibration two more times after, um, after I did the video. Uh, and one time I got 103.3, and the other time I got 103.4. So I averaged those out and rounded off to 103.4 millimeters. So your mileage may vary. You may have a little bit more variability, but run three, average, and round up to the nearest uh, tenth of a millimeter. And if you think about it, that tenth of a millimeter really represents one part per thousand uh, precision. So um, it's, you know, pretty good. So I've got 837. I, um, I extruded 103.4 when I should have extruded 100, which means my extruder is over extruding a little bit. So let's open up a calculator. Here's a calculator. Oh, I see I've already got the value calculator there. Well, I'll show you how to do this. The formula that you want to use is the actual value that you were expecting, so that would be 100 millimeters, divided by your experimental value, so 103.4. So when I click equal, I see that my, my adjustment factor, if you will, is 0.97%. Um, um, this works whether you were over extruding or under extruding. Think about this. If when I multiply now the 837 by 0.97, that number is going to get smaller. We'll see what it is in just a second, which means that I'm not going to be extruding as much material. So I was over extruding before, now I'm not going to be extruding as much material. So that works. If I had been under extruding before, this number when I did the calculation of actual divided by um, experimental, result would have been um, a larger than one number. And so when I multiply that by the existing E steps, it would make the E steps bigger. So I would go from um, under extruding to now extruding the proper amount. Hopefully that made sense. So 
I've got 0 0.967, you know, those decimal places are irrelevant. Um, I could be lazy and just leave it, or I could um, actually clear this and type in 0 0.97. And now I'm going to multiply that by my current E step value, which is 837. And I'm going to say equals, and now I get 811.9. Uh, I'm going to round that up to um, 0.9. And so now I'm going to change this to 811.9. What I like to do, you notice I just selected that and I copied that value. Because what I'm going to do is go over here and I'm going to say old in the comments section. I'm going to put what the old value was. So that way if things go horribly wrong, I can always get back and retrieve um, what the original value was and uh, and not lose you know any work. And now I'm going to change it to 811.9. 811.9, and uh, that's my new steps per millimeter calculation. I'm going to save. Well, that's interesting. My video panel here is over the Save Changes button, and I couldn't click it, so now I can. I've moved the panel. Uh, good. And it's going to ask, because I've uploaded a new config file, would I like to reboot um, the Duet? And I do actually want to reboot the Duet, so I make sure that that new value um, uh, sticks. And I click OK. And now my Duet is going to reboot. So now that that's done, I'm going to um, go back over to the printer. I am going to set the video back up, and I am going to uh, do another short video segment of um, now measuring my extruder, uh, you know, calibration. Um, now that I've made this adjustment, and uh, see how good it is. So hang on, let me go do that, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're ready to test again. Um, hot end is still up to temperature. We'll loosen the clamp. Now pull this up. Now, because this filament is so kinky, I do like to do the uh, the pinch rub to uh, warm it up a little bit to get some of these kinks out. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good, so we'll slide this back down. Okay, it's sitting against the top. I'm going to raise it up until it's about 10 millimeters from the top. I'm going to clamp down the filament so it's uh, secured. Stretch it a little bit to take out the kinks. Reset it. Run my macro. And there it beeped. Let's do one more little adjustment. And then it'll beep again and it'll start the uh, calibration. There it was, starting to extrude. Three millimeters, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. So speeding up. Fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, speeding up even more. Okay, 30 is at full speed now. I'm just pressing this gently against the top of the extruder. Okay, it's starting to slow down. Slow down a little bit more. 85, 90, so we're in the last 10 millimeters. Let's go in slow. Let's see what we get. millimeters. So I call that success. So we're calibrated much more carefully than we were before. Um, I could do you know a couple more runs and do averages 
Uh, I'll probably do that just to make sure. But you know, if I'm plus or minus half a millimeter from 100 millimeters, um, it, that's pretty darn good. There's a lot of variation in you know the kinkiness of the filament. Um, you know, even once you start actually printing the diameter of the filament and whatnot, this is not a precise science. It would be great if it were, but uh, you know, there is a little bit of a balancing act that has to go on here, and the ability to accurately measure uh, quantities like this um, is, is extremely difficult. What you want to do is have something that's reproducible, so that each time you do it, um, you know, you uh, have a good feel for the process, so you're not introducing any. Uh, errors or anomalies because of the actual measurement like you would if you make a mark on a filament and then you know do you measure to the top of the mark or the bottom of the mark or the middle of the mark or do you you know not pay any attention you just measure and uh, that introduces a lot of variability so this device will allow you to have that you know higher degree of precision um, what I will do now is do a sample uh, uh, calibration uh, cube I'm, I'm actually using a new calibration object that's a 30 millimeter cube but two of the quarters have uh, are rounded um, with a three millimeter radius, so it's kind of got a round and round, and then two square corners. Um, you can still measure the sides and the height to make sure that it's 30 millimeters, but you also get a little bit more information because you can see what the corner registration looks like, and you can see what registration around a curved um, corner looks like. I'll post that uh, model as well. But I'll run one of those and measure it and uh, make sure that my calibration is uh, for the cube itself is still uh, good. And um, then I'll move on and actually do some, some prints.